Umtos tends towards unity. That's why love and being go together. When you love somebody, you love the whole of them. You love their ontos, their beingness. Ireland is a beautiful, amazing country full of incredible people. I've met many of the Druids and spiritual elders. I've spoken to the peace uh, activists, the peace intellectuals, and I've you know, been to conferences on peace, both in North and South Ireland. You know, I love them both. And I believe that in a second referendum there, they will have the choice to rejoin the South and the North and South can once more become one, one nation and join the European Union again. I mean, that will be automatic for the people of the North because the Southern Irish have never left. They will still be part of us. And I'm delighted at that. <clears throat> um, so these are just, I'm, I suppose this is sort of moral weather report I'm giving. This is, this is the moral outlook for the next little while. <laughs> And good luck to Nicola Sturgeon, her courage, and yeah, um, and and to all the other Scots that support her. Um, I only hope, well, um, that the English um, don't commit even more crimes. The crimes against truth that the Brexit lot have committed are um, incalculably damaging. Um, there's a very stubborn streak in the English which, even though it knows it's wrong, and even though it knows it's basing its actions on falsity, will say, well, yes, but that's what the establishment says, so I must do it. It's this sort of king worship that has replaced rationality. Um, you know, if, if the monarch is saying it's Brexit's good, then that must be good. No, it doesn't work like that. Reason comes first, my friends. And, and God or the cosmic intelligence or great spirit is what underpins that. And monarchs are subject to this just as much as all of us, druids or seers or prophets. You know, my job, our job as druids and seers is to see, to get a hint of that cosmic intelligence, what it wants. It always wants justice and it always wants peace. But how do you translate that into the culture and the, the time and the place? Well, what you don't do is Brexit. That's completely, utterly against that cosmic intelligence. And um, But, you know, try telling that to an Englishman that voted for Brexit. And, you know, it's like... Um, <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's confronting Sophia phobia, which is this, this hatred and, and, and fear of wisdom. Well, I can only keep trying, keep praying, and I'm a spiritual healer, so I've also been writing uh, a chapter on spiritual healing and religious maths and looking at examples of how that works. I'm interested in the collective spiritual healing of mankind. This COVID outbreak is one of the worst challenges to that ever. And, yeah, I can only wish all my friends and colleagues and students and, and so on, just healing power and healing energy. And again, it's through truth that we find healing. Um, we will outlast the lies. We will outlast the people that have brought this. If this pandemic is man-made, you know, we will outlast the people that have made it because they, they don't have on toss on their side. They die off because they self-destruct. That's what will happen to the evil people that have brought Brexit, just as it's happened to the, the crazy people behind Trump, the sort of QAnon types. Their whole cosmology is founded on lies and on deliberate lies, actually, that were seeded by people, <clears throat> Discordians. Well, they've been found out. They're going to be prosecuted, you know, uh, because justice is on the side of truth, which is on the side of being. Right, so there we are. That's my little weather report. I'm going to finish with a poem, as if I won't, because I, I, one thing I absolutely loved about the um, service for, well, the inauguration service for President Biden was, of course, Amanda Gorman's amazing poem. Amanda, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You carry the flame of poetry. <laughs> you are the druidess of America. I love you, and your poem was superb. Um, you know, thank you. And she speaks for all the poets in the world. Um, and
and I run Poets for Peace. I'm going to write to Amanda and see if she wants to become an honorary member. Um, and she is amazing. And this is um, a little poem I'm going to finish with called The Druid Bible. <laughs> it sort of fits in with what I've been talking about. This is from my latest volume, volume 7 of my collected poems. These I've written from 2016 to 2020, so they're my most recent um, <clears throat> we're falling away from the sun falling into the imponderable dark with each breath we go further down further under where the majestic darkness waits for us the sweet blue gods and goddesses of insights. Those who manage all trysts and improbable dreamings. The soul arrangers of lovers. The moments of seeing and not seeing. Of mirroring and not accounting the minutes as real or possible. The covering vast distances in a flash and the going further in, then coming to settle, finding a leaf to burrow into, to be sucked in by its greenness. Then being transported, photonic angels becoming electrons, becoming sugars. All the dense dance of the life chain, upwards building, playing in the western waters of lover's wetness, becoming nude and recognising each other's light flash. Reading the texts that tell this story, but they're upside down, so need putting right side up. Shem Jazza's story, Lucifer's long narrative left out. Prometheus's boldness. The poetic Bible rearranged to tell it from the light's perspective. How each daemon and each angel swapped places, often to get the whole thing done. This the Druids knew, chanting their praises to the sun. This old Blake could see, wandering about Peckham in a dream. And Christ, in Galilee, holding his Magdalene. They could see it too. The Druid Bible.